a tragic diagnosis, a years-long struggle with addiction, the early loss of a parent. Married with children spent 11 seasons making light of family dysfunction, but the real-life experiences of the show's cast are anything but funny. Katie Seagal embodied Peg Bundy with panache and zeal. Hey, did anybody hear any noises last night? Well, your father had gas. <laughs> But behind the snazzy leopard print outfits and outrageous bouffant lay a deep sadness. Katie is the daughter of director Boris Seagal. In 1981, he was tragically killed in a helicopter accident when filming the TV movie World War III. According to UPI, at one point he turned towards the rear of the helicopter, where he was caught up in its blades and severely injured. He died several hours later, aged 57. Reflecting on the loss, Seagal told ABC News that she was shocked when she heard of her father's death, as she had only spoken to him the day before. In her memoir, Grace Notes, she details how she did not get to see him in hospital before he died. By the time she had arrived in Oregon, where he was hospitalized, he succumbed to his injuries. Seagal wrote, the whole thing was surreal. Just like that, he was gone, just as he and I were starting to get to know each other. My way of dealing things in the moment was to very much check out. Despite the magnitude of the loss, Seagal has been able to find comfort through the realization that her father is always with her, reflecting, I have become him in so many ways, truly daddy's girl. As Kelly Bundy, Christina Applegate personified peroxide blonde 90s chic, becoming one of many it girls of the era. Applegate played Kelly with aplomb even when faced with some of the cruder put-downs directed at the character. They took my creative virginity! <laughs> yeah, she's got a point there, Dad. She, she could have still had that. <laughs> In 2008, 11 years after Married with Children ended, a then 36-year-old Applegate was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent a double mastectomy. She told Oprah Winfrey, It can be very painful. It's also a part of you that's gone, so you go through a grieving process and a mourning process. Not that many people know that that happens to women my age or women in their 20s, and so this is my opportunity now to go out and fight. Applegate's mom, actor Nancy Pretty, is also a breast cancer survivor and a carrier of the BRCA gene. Poignantly, Applegate decided to take some nude photos prior to having her breasts removed, as she explained, so I can kind of remember them. Unfortunately, the invasive surgery did not end there for Applegate. In 2017, she revealed to Today that she'd elected to have her fallopian tubes and ovaries removed, noting that her cousin died of ovarian cancer. She told the outlet that she fears for her daughter's future. Due to the BRCA gene, Applegate revealed, "...the chances that my daughter is BRCA positive are very high. It breaks my heart to think that's a possibility." Applegate is now cancer-free and raising awareness of the disease via Right Action for Women. Poor Bud was always the butt of the joke on Married with Children. Despite his intelligence, the teen just couldn't catch a break. Since playing Bud, David Faustino's career has ebbed and flowed, appearing in bit parts on TV shows and truly cementing his typecast status with a stint on series Celebrity Boot Camp in 2002. Bud Bundy, right? Yes, sir! You gotta be kidding me. One might assume Faustino would be set for life thanks to the sitcom, but that isn't exactly the case. He told Access in 2009 that he receives zero residuals from Married with Children, saying, "...we got really screwed over. I mean, the show was on for 11 years and we all made really good money while we were doing it, but residuals, we all got screwed over." This was due to the fact that Fox, then being a cable channel and thus under a cable contract, was not obligated to pay residuals. Faustino conceded, "...Married with Children has made over a billion dollars and we didn't really get a piece of that." Though he hasn't landed any other mega-hit sitcoms since Married with Children, Faustino has kept working. He has a number of voice acting credits, he hosted a radio show called Old Scratch Radio, and he and fellow TV star Corin Nemec star in the Curb Your Enthusiasm-esque web series Starving. There's perhaps no sitcom character who encapsulates the misery of working a job you hate better than Al Bundy. While Ed O'Neill earned big bucks for the role, his early life was anything but prosperous. 10 a.m. on Thursday, I've got to come up with a small fortune. Well, let's see what we got here. Uh, free money for fools? Nope, nothing here. 
As O'Neill explained to Wealth Simple, he was raised in a working-class family in Ohio. We lived in a ramshackle apartment building on the north side of town between the train tracks and public housing projects. Both of his parents worked, but money was tight, and as O'Neill explained, it wasn't always a given that they'd be able to afford basic necessities, like utilities. His father worked in his hometown's steel mill, and O'Neill eventually began working there, too. The gig was tough. The conditions in the mill were hazardous at best. He divulged to Wealth Simple, You could only stay inside a furnace for five minutes at a stretch because you'd literally catch on fire. You could feel the graphite in the air singeing your lungs. Discussing his upbringing in an interview with Capital and Maine, O'Neill revealed that his time at the mill highlighted to him the importance of unionization. Having faced unemployment after a brief stint as a footballer, he decided to join the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. He mused, "...you had to assert yourself because otherwise they weren't going to give anything to you. So I've always been in my heart of hearts a teamster, a union guy." Having survived cancer, Christina Applegate was faced with yet another illness over a decade later. In 2021, she revealed that she had been diagnosed with a neurological disease, multiple sclerosis. The illness causes pain and mobility problems, though severity varies. On Twitter, Applegate reflected on her diagnosis with good humor, sharing, "...it's been a strange journey, but I have been so supported by people that I know who also have this condition. It's been a tough road, but as we all know, the road keeps going, unless a m***hole blocks it." She sought comfort in another actor living with MS, Selma Blair, who wrote to Applegate, "...loving you always, always here, as are our kids, beating us up with love." During a Twitter Q&A with fans, Applegate opened up about her illness and pondered the fact that both she and Blair, her co-star in 2002 comedy The Sweetest Thing, share the diagnosis. Recalling the great time she had on set with Blair, she conceded that it was, quote, "...sad both of us have MS." In season six of Married with Children, both Peg and her neighbor Marcy announced they were pregnant, much to everyone's surprise. This is truly a joyous day for us all. <laughs> the writers decided on this storyline for Peg because Katie Seagal became pregnant in 1991. In the episode Al Bundy's Shoe Dick, however, the plotline was revealed to be a dream. It was a decision the writers made out of respect for Seagal, who ended up suffering a stillbirth during filming. During an appearance on The View, she opened up about the intense guilt she felt after the tragedy, saying, "...it was a very difficult thing. I lost a child at almost eight months." And I just couldn't let go of the control of somehow I had done something wrong. She revealed that the loss took a toll on her mental health, and she struggled to leave the house afterwards. A year later, she was able to regain control over her life thanks to some wise words offered by a Buddhist friend. Sometimes we have these little souls that come in and out and that their mission is completed. When Seagal released her debut album, Well, in 1994, she paid tribute to the baby she lost on the song Can't Hurry the Harvest. After Married with Children, Katie Seagal enjoyed further sitcom fame on Eight Simple Rules. Soon, however, tragedy would strike. In 2003, Seagal's on-screen husband, comedy mainstay John Ritter, began feeling unwell while rehearsing on set per today. He was sent to the emergency room and died soon after at the age of 54. Although his death was deemed a heart attack, the actor's widow, Amy Yazbek, believed that it could have been prevented. Yazbek claimed that doctors had misinterpreted Ritter's medical results, leading to his untimely death. Accordingly, she filed a lawsuit. As reported by People, Seagal was devastated by Ritter's passing and testified in his wrongful death trial, telling the jury as she wept that she loved John. The doctors were ultimately cleared of any wrongdoing. Ritter's death was poignantly written into Eight Simple Rules, showing both the cast and the Hennessy family dealing in real time with the tragic loss. Opening up about her friend's passing, Seagal told EW that she was grateful for being given the opportunity to grieve on screen, stating that it wouldn't have felt right to continue with the show without addressing the tragedy. She reflected, "...what I loved about that job was John Ritter. John was an amazing person. I'll never forget when I had to audition for that job. John whispered to me while I was in there, "'You're my favorite. You're the one I want,' which was so, so sweet." Off you go. In her memoir, Grace Notes, Katie Seagal opened up about her history of alcohol and drug use. She recalled befriending Lorna Luft, daughter of Judy Garland, when she was a kid, and claimed that the two of them would take their mother's prescription pills. It wasn't long before she didn't have to swipe someone else's meds. Seagal wrote, "...when I was 14, our family doctor prescribed me diet pills, and so I had pills of my own. I got the message, if you feel bad, take a pill." I definitely uh, took to those diet pills. 
Seagal eventually came to terms with her struggles with addiction. As she recalled to ABC News, it was thanks to an encounter with someone in recovery on a TV set that she decided to get sober. Suddenly, she realized that sobriety, something she had long deemed an impossibility, was a reality entirely within her grasp. Speaking with Bustle, Seagal revealed that the death of her father motivated her to try to quit drugs and alcohol. Then, just two months after getting clean, she scored the role of Peg Bundy on Married with Children. She told the outlet, I stayed sober and watched all the people around me, and I learned how to do what I do now. Seagal has now been sober for over 30 years. Katie Seagal's mother lived with heart disease for many years, and these health struggles would be the cause of immense pain for both herself and her daughter. In her memoir, Seagal reflected on the agony of witnessing her mother, Sarah Zwilling, suffer from the disease. She wrote in a harrowing admission, "...even then, as a teenager, I knew there was only so much I could do, that hers was a fragile life and that it was only a matter of time before there would be an exit." Tragically, Zwilling's health struggles led to her attempting suicide on more than one occasion. Then, when Seagal was just 21 years old, her adolescent sisters discovered that Zwilling had died in her sleep from a heart attack. Seagal, however, believes that her mom actually died by suicide, hypothesizing that the family doctor may have claimed Zwilling's heart condition was the cause of death as a way of sparing her and her sister's feelings. Seagal told ABC News that since her mother had been sick for a long time, her death, while devastating, wasn't that surprising. Speaking with The Hollywood Reporter, Seagal said that writing her memoir was beneficial to re-evaluating her relationship with her parents and learning to truly appreciate them. She reflected, "...it allowed me to miss them. To revisit them is just a way for me to acknowledge how much I love and miss them." If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255.